What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Have you noticed that, you know, I, my, I, my, my work, my life, my fruits, my goods, my barns. My profession, everything, my mind, what a self-centered man. And then he says, and I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be? which thou hast provided. And you understand? Houses will not follow you to heaven. You realize certificates will not follow you to heaven. You realize riches, bank account, will not follow you to heaven. The only thing that will follow you to heaven, that salvation experience, that new birth experience, you understand that all those things you amass and all those things you take glory in, all those things, I want this, I want this, I want that, will not follow you to heaven. But holiness without which no man shall save the Lord, that righteousness, that purity of heart that will help you to see the Lord. This man did not put that forth. All he wanted is my this, my that, my property, my position, and all that. And God said, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? He says, so is he. This general now, this talking about you. So is he. It's talking about everyone. This, so you see, that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. No salvation. It's not rich towards God. There's no sanctification. It's not rich towards God. There is no priority of putting the kingdom of God forth. And so is everyone that is uh, so foolish and is so only thinking about material things and about property, about physical, touchable, tangible things. We're looking at Psalm 119. Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 36. Prioritizing the reign of the great high king. Prioritizing. Push it as priority. That the number one thing in your life, as you wake up in the morning, number one thing in your life, as you retire in the evening, is that you want to check up, you want to take inventory. How is it between your soul and the Almighty God? In Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 36, it says, Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. Incline my heart, let me lean towards thy testimony. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. And that's the kind of prayer to pray. And let's look at another person that shall show some wisdom in uh, making the kingdom of God and the service of God and the salvation of the Lord and the worship of the Lord, the priority and not the things of this world and then all the things that this person did not even ask for, the Lord gave. Look at Ruth chapter 1. In Ruth chapter 1, we're reading from verse, nine, from verse 15. Rediscovering the forgotten path to blessing. And it thinks your soul may be discerning. You say, this year, if I could have this, if I could have this and that, can we push that aside for some time and prioritize the kingdom of God and make sure that beyond everything, above everything, besides everything, you have their spiritual experience and then your soul is attached unto God. Your soul is dedicated unto the Lord. You say, number one, number one, number one thing in my life, I'm going to serve God this year. I'm going to give myself to God this year. I'm going to be totally sold out to God this year. I'm going to be totally consecrated, committed, submissive, surrendered unto the Lord this year. That will be the number one thing in my life. And then I'm going to allow God to do the rest and arch unto me the rest, whatever he wants to do. Ruth chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 15. Ruth chapter 1 verse 15. And she said, it's now me now talking to uh, Ruth. And uh, behold, the sister-in-law is come back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou 
after thy sister-in-law. Uh, the uh, mother-in-law, that's Naomi, had been talking about, you know, if you follow me, I cannot promise you husband. If you follow me, I cannot promise you much accommodation. If you follow me, I cannot promise you much of the things of this life. And when Opa considered that and said, uh -uh, what does the future hold? If we follow this uh, mother-in-law, so she went back. And Naomi said unto Ruth, now your sister-in-law has come back. Because she was putting the things of the world first. Money first. Accommodation first. Profession first. My husband first. Having children first. When I have all that then, I will come and serve the Lord. But then she went back because there's nobody that could promise her that. Look at verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I don't know what the place looks like, beautiful or, or ramshackle seed, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. Look at this. Thy God, my God. Thy God, my God. She put God first. That's what Jesus said. Even before Jesus came to this world, Ruth understood the pathway to blessing. She understood that if you're going to get the richest of blessings from the Lord, the greatest of blessings from the Lord, the highest of blessings from the Lord, you put God first like God, my God, where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me. And more also, if aught but death part thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. But look at this. The thing she didn't ask her, and she didn't say, well, when I get there, I'll use whatever method. I must have husband. I'm following you, but I must have husband. I'm following you, I must have good housing. I'm following you, I must have health care, good health care. I'm following you, but I must have this and that. You don't have to have, you don't have to emphasize all that. See, keep forced. The kingdom of God. Make sure you are born again. Make sure you are saved. Make sure you are sanctified. Make sure should the rapture happen any moment. Before we get there, after we get there, make sure you are rapturable. Make sure the righteousness of the kingdom is in your heart. The life of the king is reflected and reproduced in your life. Make sure that that righteousness and that holiness without which no man shall save the Lord, make sure that that is in place. All these other things, leave God, leave that with God. God is a faithful God. He blesses the people that serve him. And the people that look up to him to be blessed, he blesses them. Look at Ruth chapter 4. In Ruth chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Well, what a upper thought may not happen, it happened. The blessing upper went for, before upper got anything, Ruth had got a So This year, if you do the right thing with God, you'll get more than you are praying for. And you'll get more than your heart wishes in Jesus' name. If you rediscover this forgotten path to the blessing of God, that just think about God and just say, God, you are number one in my life this year. If I need to make a choice, either come to church or go for a business, uh, you know, trip, I'll come to church. If I had to make a choice, either come to the Bible study or go to watch, uh, you know, something somewhere. No, I will come to the Bible study. I'm going to make God force in everything and all the bribes and all the corruption, everything the other people are, and they say, if you don't do this, you cannot make it in this country. And you say, even if I don't have that, number one in my life, who is number one in your life? God will be number one. And then you'll find what he did for the, for the patriarchs of old. And what he did for the prophets and the people of old, he will do for you in Jesus' name. In Ruth chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Now, these are the generations of Pharaohs. And Pharaoh begat Esron, and you know, it goes on. And uh, why don't I, you know, back up a little bit and read from verse 13 so you understand where it comes in here? And so Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when she went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. How about her? Uh, Opa has gone without any record. 
you will not go without any record. You know, the people, I'm running for this, I'm running for this, will forget you. Heaven will forget you. God will forget you. And you will just pass through life without any record. But the people who say, I've heard what Jesus said. And I'm going to follow after what Jesus Christ has said. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I'm going to do exactly that. You'll be in remembrance forever in Jesus' name. And the women in verse 14, and the women said, Unto Naomi, blessed be the Lord, which has not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. You see, those who make the righteous, they will be, be famous on earth and famous in heaven. And then it goes on to say, And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thine old age, for thy daughter-in-law, for thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, and which is better to thee than seven sons, has born him. And now me took the child and laid it in her bosom, and became nurse unto it. And the women, and the women, and her neighbors, and they came and they gave each a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse and the father of David. And then you trace that to the Lord Jesus Christ. A good portion came to her. A good portion will come to you. Because this woman, because she chose God first and said, Because God is first in my life, then the rest followed the rest will follow in your life look at proverbs chapter 23 verse 26 proverbs chapter 23 and we're reading from verse 26 you see what the lord is saying make good force this year if you are not born again get born again quick turn away from your sin and then receive the lord jesus as your personal savior if you're born again but you know you're still carrying some guilt you're studying some things and then every time you see that you say even though i say i'm born again it looks like i'm a thief i'm a robber make confession make your restitution and it is that that will clear you up and your conscience will become clear before the lord repentance restitution reconciliation righteousness and then you are walking your way without any guilt and without any oppressing thing in your heart Give your heart totally to the Lord and let there be no reservation. Just say, praise the Lord. I'm serving the Lord. Because, you know, without repentance, you cannot get saved. And then without restitution, that salvation will be shaky. will not be very sure. The fellow that is still using all the, all the stolen property, all the stolen materials, and is still building the house or the money he stole from the office or from the church, you know, your, your, your salvation will not be real. And if Christ comes, of course, you're not going to go. With all the money you stole in the church, all the money you stole, also in your office, building out, and the house you will not take away. And then you will be grounded because of that stolen thing. Restore everything so that you can be free. You say, praise the Lord, I am saved. Praise the Lord, my life is new. And your life will be new this year in Jesus' name. Then will the promise of the Lord be real in your life. I will do better things unto you than your former time, than your beginning. Proverbs chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 26. It says, my son, give me thine heart, the whole of your heart. The whole of your heart. That's what he requires. That's what he demands. And if you're a real child of God, that's what you really want to do. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. We're looking at uh, uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 29. The choice you make, the decision you make, and the path you follow, and the life you live in um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, and verse 29. Then Peter and the rest and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to be God rather than men. Think about that. Your extended family will put some pressure on you. Come take this uh, chieftain's title. Come take this, come take that. God forbids me to do that. They will say the same way. Your family, if you don't do this, we're going to disown you. We ought to be God rather than men. 
Maybe there are some religious people too. Maybe you are connected with them one way or the other. And you say, do this or do that. And then you see it's against the word of God. And you decide to put God first this year. Every moment of your life, in every decision you take, anywhere you go, you say, I'm sorry, I'm going to obey God. We ought to obey God rather than me. Maybe he's a backsliding member of the church. Our church here, he is backsliding, and then he does a lot of things, and he allows himself to compromise here and compromise there. And then they say, you will do this. I'm sorry, I can't do that anymore now. This year, I've dedicated my heart, my spirit, my soul, my mind my my action my behavior my character i've dedicated everything to the lord hey i am your so and so i am your leader i brought you to the church hey don't tell me story we ought to be god brother that means it may be a wife that is saying well i know what uh, you know the what the teachers and all that but you know i just like this i just like that uh, but you like that contrary to the word of God, this year I've dedicated my life, my all, everything, I've laid it on the altar. That's what it means to be really saved. That's what it means to be really sanctified. We ought to obey God rather than men. It may be your husband that comes and he says, you know what, if you want me to have my mind on you and my eyes on you, I'd like to, to you to put on this and put on that. But look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Don't talk about that. I say this is what I want. And then you be able to say that you put God first and you put the demand of God and the commandment of God and the standard of the word of God, you put that first in your life. You say, I love you, my husband, but I would rather obey God more than men. It means that this year, God or the above gifts in your life. Whatever gift anybody wants to give, whatever gifts, you know, even spiritual gifts, you say, yes, all that is good. God, number one, heaven above the earth. Whatever earth may promise you, and whatever the people on earth may promise you this year, heaven will be above the earth. The spiritual above the material things. You know, there may be, you know, your friends and your colleagues, everybody, they are running after these material things. You see them, and they are watching you because you fold your hand, you are looking at them, they say, hey, come on, won't you run? The rat trace, we're all running. Don't you have this? Don't you want this? You say, this year, God is number one in my life. What if you don't have this? You wait and see. I'm going to have those things that you're running after. I'm going to have them before you. Somebody gives me an amen there. Because while you are standing here, seeking only the glory of God, and the people are running, they want the material things of the world, and they abandon God before they get anything, whatever, you have got your own. Because he says, if you put in force, if you seek the kingdom of God first, and his righteousness is going to act unto you, all these other things, he will do that in Jesus' name. Have you noticed how people care for their body? They pass in the morning, and then they put on good clothes, they go to work, they earn money, they go to school, they have certificates, or whatever they do. Have you noticed that everything is for the body? And most people that do that for their body, they neglect their soul, they neglect their spirit. There is no quiet time in the morning. There's no devotion in the morning. There's no Bible reading in the morning.